All right, today I'm gonna to show you my first attempts to make a documentary film using the Atomos Ninja 5 and the Canon EOS R. You're a beautiful person and you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. I set the camera back up after finishing filming the vlog because I always forget to ask for you to subscribe. That's the reason I do this channel is I love to connect with people. I love the conversation in the comments. I love to learn from you. And so this time I want to make a point at the beginning of the video to ask you to click the subscribe button, click the notifications bell. I'm practicing my documentary film skills. I wanna capture the highest quality footage I can. And so I'm using the Canon EOS R, recording to an external monitor, external recorder, the Atomos Ninja 5. And so I'm capturing 4K footage. Now there is a crop, this a significant crop factor, um, but it's recording in 10 bit. And so one of the things I've understood about what that means is you can capture more variations of, let's say, a shade of red. You can get a thousand different shades of red uh, versus 250 in 8 bit. So I'm using the external recorder to help me get the highest quality footage. I'm recording in C log or Canon log, and then I'm color grading that. This is something I've tried in the past and I haven't had very good success until yesterday. I'm really excited about this process. One of the things I'm doing is I'm reaching out to local photographers. Today I spend time with Adon Olivares. He's a photographer out of Santa Ana. He works all over Southern California. And so I spent some time getting some behind the scenes footage and then today we captured an interview. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna share the process with you about filming behind the scenes and documenting their work. And I'm gonna produce standalone documentary films, short, two minutes, five minutes at first, because I wanna practice my documentary film skills because that's something I'm really, really interested in developing. It's important for me, it's one of my goals. Point of clarification. You'll see footage of Adana and I talking in the car that's shot on the GoPro Hero 7. I understand the quality of the video is mm, not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the high quality of filmmaking I'm interested in for the documentary. This is just behind the scenes footage. Uh, we're just getting the audio on the Zoom H6. So please disregard that film quality um, and just enjoy the, the story. Um, and the other thing is when I cut away to the footage from the Canon EOS R, I throw on some cinematic bars so that's one thing you'll notice. And then I do a different color grading, uh, which is not just the C-log color grading, but I add on a LUT on top of that. So I'm happy with how it looks, but just know there's a, a combination of footage, the GoPro Hero 7 when we're in the car, and then everything else that's a cutaway is the Canon EOS R recording 10-bit 4K footage out to the Atomos Ninja 5. Hope you enjoy it. Leave me a comment. Again, this is the behind the scenes vlog with some of the documentary footage I'm collecting, but I'm working on a separate short documentary about a Don that's um, just kind of a standalone piece. Now come later. Thanks for joining. All right. Let's go. So you grew up in Santa Ana? Yeah, uh, I've been in Santa Ana all my life. I was born in TJ, came over here when I was like, I think like eight or nine months old. Oddly enough, I've been the same square mile all my life. Um, I'm still in the same area. But yeah, Santa Ana all my life. I'm Where, a product of the city. Where'd you go to school? I know Valley, right? I went to, I went to Valley. Okay. I went to, for junior high, I went to Carr and McFadden. Troubling times when I was young, so I went from one school to another. <laughs> when did you get into photography? It's probably been about 10 years now. It was like 08 or 09. I'm heavily in the car scene, in the lowrider car scene. I bought a camera to take pictures of my cars. Like cars you own? Yeah, cars that I own. I've had all these cars, I don't have any pictures of them. Right before camera phones were right. good, you know? Yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna buy a camera. So I bought a camera. Do you remember which? It was a Nikon D7000. Okay. Spent like 800 bucks, so I felt like, dude, I can't believe I spent I, I all this arrived. money, you know, like, wow. <laughs> and I remember going to a car show and taking pictures with it and being like, oh my God, 
these pictures are amazing. <laughs> like, why would anybody spend more money on cameras or on lenses or on lights? Yeah. Obviously, now I look back at those pictures, I'm like, well, what the hell? <laughs> but at the time, I was like, wow, these pictures are great. Yeah. As you go, you see the limitations of your gear. Yeah. And you get an idea of what you want your pictures to look like. And then you figure out why they don't look that way. Yeah. And you, you do what you have to do. Practice pushing your gear farther or getting better gear. By that, I mean, you know, getting fast lenses, speed lights. Yeah. Soft boxes. From the beginning, I was always into the artificial light. Okay. I've, ne I've never been into natural light. That's interesting. Yeah. Because most people, I think, are scared of that that artificial light it's like a, a learning curve they just don't jump into i think for me since i already didn't know what i was doing <laughs> i was just stepping into another arena of things i didn't know that I, what i was doing right. so did I don't you know. see somebody do it yes yes um who was that jay bueno rest in peace he was a photographer for lowrider magazine mm -hmm. before i knew i wanted to be a photographer i would look at his work and i would be like what the hell like i was at this car show and i saw this car and this is not what it looks like like <laughs> what is this guy doing and i would look at my pictures and i, I couldn't understand you know yeah. and then um i messaged them online this was before facebook there was a website called lay it low okay and it was a website for for lowrider guys and there was a photographer for him and i was just just because i like looking at the pictures and, and i messaged him and this guy at the time he's shooting for Lowrider magazine he's shooting for celebrities he's doing all the er he's a big deal man yeah I message him and I'm thinking ah, he's not gonna get back to me you know but I'm just gonna hit him up next day he messages me I had told him like hey man like I don't understand what you're doing like trying to get into photography but I see your pictures and I don't understand how does that happen how are your skies so blue how are the colors so so beautiful so vibrant yeah and then he explained to me that he shot with speed lights that he shot he would set up a whole and he, and he sent me what now I know it was a behind the scenes picture. Back then I just saw a picture with a whole bunch, bunch of lights around right. the car. And I was like, why would you add a light in the daytime? <laughs> like. <laughs> He was an amazing human being. Unfortunately, he, he, he passed away from cancer mm. at a young age. I think he was like in his mid forties, but um, he was an extremely talented photographer, but the human he was was bigger than his photography. Yeah. But but he's the one who told me like, look, you know, you gotta you gotta expose for the sky, and you, and you gotta and, and when you expose for the sky. I think know, that's what you told me the yeah, first time. You're yeah. Like, expose for the sky. <laughs> and whatever's in the bottom is gonna be darker, so just that light. Yeah. To match the sky, and yeah. That was that conversation I had with Jay was maybe. Eight years ago, nine years ago, wow. and I'm still trying to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to, you know, I'm still trying to. He was way ahead of his time, man. Like, like yeah. the stuff he was doing was amazing, and I still can't do it. If I was to say, if I had a style, that's my style, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to walk into a situation where the sun tells me how to light it or the light. No, I'm gonna walk in and say, this is what I want to show. I'm gonna underexpose this part. I'm gonna expose that part, and you're gonna see what I want you to see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, great. that's my style. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to, I'm trying to perfect it. I'm trying to understand it still. It, you, you know how photographers always say, "I'm always learning." Yeah. What, what, <laughs> what we mean by that is, every time I go out, I mess something up, and I figure <laughs> out how to fix it. 